Good afternoon and welcome to the Bank of England's IT Graduate Program webinar. My name is Joanne Fleming and my role in the IT division is Private Secretary to our CIO, John Finch. I'm absolutely delighted to be able to talk with you this afternoon and I'm joined by my colleagues Will Lovell, Head of Plan, Helen Roberts, Head of Solution Delivery, Angus Lee, Data Architect, and Neil Femekin, Head of Build. Looking at the agenda for this afternoon's webinar, I will get us started by talking a little bit about the Bank of England and why you should consider our graduate program. I'll then hand over to my colleagues who will talk about the structure of the graduate program, the kind of work you can expect to get involved in, and what you need to do to apply. We aim to speak for approximately 30 minutes with a further 30 minutes to answer any questions that you might have. But please do ask any questions as we go through the webinar using the chat functionality. Why the Bank of England? Well, let me share some of the headlines from today's papers with you. Financial Times. Bank of England votes to keep rates and QE on hold. The Independent. The message that Mark Carney, Governor of the Bank of England, has been seeking to get across is that even when rates do start to rise, the increase, increases will be modest. And finally, the te Telegraph. When senior officials at the Bank of England use words like dangerous and nervous to discuss the housing market, politicians should listen. Today is not unique. Every day, research, opinion, and data from the bank help to shape, guide, and influence the direction of the UK and even the world economy. How many people can truly say that when they come to work, they aim to promote the good of the people of the United Kingdom through monetary and financial stability? The bank's IT department, an in-house team roughly 500 strong, sits truly at the heart of the bank, enabling a digital, socially connected and knowledge-based enterprise. We aim to operate at pace with innovation at our core. And so the IT division plans, it builds, and it runs the systems which support all of the functions that the bank fulfills. On the current slide, you'll see four pillars. These are the four pillars which, un which underpin the bank's strategy and which give you an insight into the culture and what it's like to work at the bank. I'd like to focus on diverse and talented for a moment. This is really important to the bank as we aim to reflect the population that we represent. We want to attract and nurture talent. We want diversity of views and thinking. And the IT graduate program is a really good example of this. And it's open not just to IT graduates, but graduates from all disciplines. We know, for example, that geography and music students make some of the best coders. Um, I myself have come from a business psychology background, and my colleague Helen studied politics. So, on that note, let me hand over to Will Lovell, Head of Plan, to tell you more about IT in the bank. Hello. Uh, my name is Will Lovell and I'm going to talk to you about how IT is structured in the bank and um, a little bit of introduction into the graduate program. I need some help here. Slide change is happening. Yeah. Apologies for that, I had a small technical problem making the slides change. So, this is the introduction to technology in the bank. Um, and this is how we organize ourselves. And we call this plan, build, run, and secure. And what this reflects is that in our IT department, we are covering all the disciplines that you might find in the IT life cycle. So within plan, we're looking at what the business needs, we're looking at architecture, we're looking at value. Within build, we're building the systems and maintaining the systems and applications and infrastructure that the bank needs to discharge its functions. Within run, 
that's about creating great service to make make sure everything works when people come in in the morning and the problems get dealt with properly. We pull out Secure separately because clearly being a central bank, security is really, really important to us. And uh, we want to make sure that our data isn't compromised and that our information is not leaked. So let's look a little bit more at the graduate program. Manage that transition a bit better. So we organize it into um, a set of paths, and we're going to talk you through now what the paths are. So the first four are called the developer for central bank systems. We have a separate developer path for uh, data scientists. We have an infrastructure path, and we have a security path. But we're also looking for graduates who may want to become business analysts um, and test analysts. We've had a lot of success here in the past. So we'll be talking you through how, after maybe year one on the program, those options open up as well. On the right-hand side, you can see we've got our T-model here, which represents the breadth of knowledge and the depth of knowledge that we're seeking to offer as part of this program. So this is really calling out that we want to give people exposure to all the different parts of the IT lifecycle so they can really learn how their role fits within the function, but also give some real focus so you can take the skills that you've got and bring them to bear on the kinds of problems that we're trying to solve. I'm going to hand over to uh, Helen Roberts now, who's going to talk in a little bit more detail about what happens in some of those parts. Hi there, my name's Helen Roberts. I'm going to talk to you about some of the paths that are open of our graduate programme. The first of which you can see on screen now is for our central bank systems. And just to pick up on a point that Joanne made earlier, this really is a path that's open to people who do non-technical disciplines at university as well as technical degrees. So we have people, for instance, who've done astrophysics, maths, biology, geography, all of the above, have applied successfully and had great careers through this path. For a developer in this stream, you're part of a team of about 200 people working on a broad range of technologies and systems used across the bank. The team is entirely based in our offices in the heart of the City of London, which means you're always surrounded by a group of technical experts who are on mentoring an official part of the program, and you can also expect some formal technical training to form part of your course. The team looks after about 800 systems, and you can imagine the breadth of technologies and languages that gives you exposure to. We look after the critical payment system at the heart of the UK economy, which covers about £235 billion worth of transactions a day. It's pretty phenomenal. We also look at cutting-edge innovation when it comes to data analytics and business information. We also have contact with software providers giving us third-party solutions, which means you get some contact points with people across the industry who can always keep an eye on what's going on. The broad variety of programming languages and technologies, some of which you can see on the screen, means there's a real opportunity to either specialise or get involved in the breadth of technology areas, which is a pretty unique opportunity when it comes to development in the heart of London. Following on from a year on this course, you can either continue to stay on the path and keep learning development skills and central bank systems, or you can choose to opt onto one of two other streams, which I've just talked briefly through. First is testing whereby we make sure that the quality of code that we're producing is good enough for our users across the bank. Again, like all of the other paths, there's formal training that forms part of this course and formal qualifications that allow you to continue testing career throughout ISTD. This is a heightened level of business contact, and the person you can see on screen is on our current graduate scheme, Kira. She's chosen to do an AS Economics level degree just to give her a bit more context around what it is that she's involved with on a day-to-day -day basis. You can also choose to go into business analysis, which is a really project focused role that we have within our IT department. There were 70 projects in the last year alone. Again, there's a really high level of business contact in this role, and it means you can develop a real expertise about what it is that the bank needs from IT to be successful. So that's a brief introduction to some of our paths, and I'll pass you over to Angus, our data architect, to talk to you about the role of data scientist. Hi, 
I'm Angus Lee, uh, I'm a Bay architect and I'm also uh, a person that joined as a IT graduate many years ago. Uh, so the data science part is uh, it's a really exciting area for the bank and the IT department right now because um, it's really becoming a, a very important part of the bank's future strategy. Uh, so currently it encompasses uh, a variety of technologies and tools focusing on business intelligence, i.e. helping people consume and uh, use data, and also mathematical modeling where there's a kind of more complex mathematical element. Um, so really, uh, this, this is uh, an area that um, kind of has two strings really, one of which, the first of which rather, is that uh, where, where we need to start something from the beginning and business areas have a complex um, requirement that kind of needs to be teased out, we need to be able to deploy specialists in this data analysis and consumption area to kind of help them kind of drive out what the requirement might be. Uh, and you know these kind of key areas in the rest of the building are data, data analytics, data consumption, mathematical modeling, and so many people that can help with that. And then secondly, the other area which is kind of key is in sort of significant projects within the organization. Uh, I'm currently working on a major project to banking regulation, which is all about consuming data that firms supply to us. Um, I'm sorry, I've just lost my place. Um, so for some people, the developer path that we've spoken about would be more appropriate, i.e. it's a kind of broader range of skills and a broader um, kind of set of interests they might, uh, that they might want to pursue. But for some, the mathematical or the deeply analytical career path and the kind of tools and technologies we'll be using uh, would be more appropriate. Um, but I mean, I, I kind of want to just emphasize as well that the data sciences path is rapidly evolving at the moment in, in kind of in parallel with the bank's emerging thinking to how it manages and handles data in the future, which makes it very, very exciting. Uh, so now I'll hand you over to Neil to talk about infrastructure. Everybody, um, I'm Norton McKinn, as mentioned earlier, I'm head of uh, Build, but I'm also responsible for the security function. And I'm going to cover um, part of infrastructure security. <coughs> um, fairly unique in the organisation in, in, in London these days, uh, we retain our data centres and our hosting platforms, and we look to build um, real skills in all of the infrastructure technologies. Um, we have teams uh, looking after operating systems, databases, service storage and networks. Um, and in those skill paths, um, you have the ability to go to fairly senior levels as far as um, uh, moving up the gradient structure, with then the ability to move into management lines or even architecture and design functions. We have replaced a, a large amount of our infrastructure over the last two to three years, and we're continuing with that refresh program, which means we have some of the latest infrastructure technology within the bank, um, new platforms around storage, uh, network infrastructures, and uh, converged infrastructure. Um, we have invested heavily in those and we have latest offerings from the EMC in the storage space, Cisco in the networks and uh, uh, service space, and you'll have the ability to really learn in-depth knowledge, in knowledge around those platforms. As I say, we invest heavily and we make sure that we have the real capability in the organization to actually um, make sure we are self-sufficient as far as managing the space. Some facts and figures to really give you some insight into the infrastructure platforms. We currently have about 1.7 petabytes of storage under management by the storage team. Um, and that's about over 1,700 ter terabytes sorry, as far as what we look after. And that grows by 30% each year. So it's a really active platform, requires us to use the latest technology in that space. And we have deployed automation and virtualization in that space to actually help us with that. We'll go back to that uh, fact. Also, uh, we have over 700 network devices across uh, the network layers, which require an awful lot of management, and around 1,600 virtual and physical servers. And those environments are called critical bank services, so we are at the forefront of make sure, making sure the bank has a stable platform to operate under. We're really looking for people with an appetite uh, and a keenness to really get in-depth knowledge around, uh, around these technologies um, and looking to help us transform our area and, and look for improvements. Now, it was mentioned earlier that we are looking for generalists, but I'd say in the infrastructure and security space, we are looking for people with more specialist degrees, uh, subjects around this space who have a keen interest in it. Security. Um, we take security at the bank very seriously, and, and, and uh, that was mentioned earlier in, in the presentation. And most people are aware the world is facing an increased risk around cyber 
security around terrorists and criminals. And I'm sure of you, most of you read articles in the press around the latest threats uh, facing the global economy. The bank is not immune to this. We're responsible, really, for making sure that we protect the, the organisation as we actually host parts of the UK, UK's critical national infrastructure. As well, the bank, bank is also responsible for um, regulating other financial institutions uh, in the UK. And as such, we're looking to be leaders in this field so we can actually provide advice to uh, uh, other organisations in, in their stance around cyber security. With that in mind, we've actually formulated a new uh, security area and we brought together um, teams across the bank to actually form a centre of excellence around security. Aligned to that, we have a rapid investment programme running to actually uplift our capability. And that's covering all areas of security, um, not just technology, but process and people as well. Uh, we have a real focus on educating our staff and our users around the, uh, the need for awareness around security. We have uh, activities around protecting the defences as far as ensuring that external intruders cannot attack the bank. Uh, we've also got more activities going on around detection of incidents, where incidents happen, how do we respond to them, how do we actually um, uh, analyse what's happening and understand the impact it has on the organisation. And forensic capability, when we are breached, what have we lost if we have lost anything? Uh, creating um, um, investment and um, evidence around legal challenge, again, a big area of investment for us. So facts and figures, again, around um, security, we have about uh, 130 firewalls. These are um, infrastructure that will actually protect the organization from the outside threat. But that actually generates, uh, they generate about 350 million messages a month. So how do we, as an organization, make sense of those messages and pick out the actual most important facts and actually understand where the bank is being targeted? Now, we are looking for people with a real interest in security and a passion for it. And I would say this is not something that you go into lightly. It needs to be something you're really interested in learning because it is a very evolving um, area. Um, threats change annually, not weekly. Um, so we're looking for the right candidate who's, who has a, a keenness to really get involved in transforming the organization as far as its security stance and learning some really relevant technologies. And, and, uh, uh, and it's a key area that we're investing in, as I say, as far as an organization. With that, I'll hand it back to Will. Hello, it's me again. Um, I'm going to talk you through now how the um, IT graduate program actually works, and um, then after that we'll sum it up. And uh, we've got some questions coming in, and we'll we'll answer those questions um, just after we finish these few slides. So here's the program with the tracks that you've just heard about: uh, security infrastructure, the data scientist, and the central bank um, developer uh, paths. And in the first year. Um, Starts off with our bank graduate induction. Now, this is the induction that we run for all graduates, not just the IT ones. We all come in together, uh, so it's a great opportunity to learn about uh, how the bank works, what the bank does. But it's also um, a fantastic chance to build your network across the organisation. So, as your career moves on and you need to start working with people in the different departments, um, you'll often find that there are people there that you already know. We follow that with our IT induction to make sure that you really understand. Um, all the different parts of the, of the department and how they fit together. Um, as, as, as Neil has said, we are perhaps unique, certainly for a London-based organization, in that we do many of these things in-house. We do work with partners, but um, we don't have a large outsource function. And that means we have all different disciplines, and it's really useful to understand how they fit. That's then followed with um, on-the-job uh, experience and training for your part. Now, of course, this is going to be different depending upon path that you're on, but we also run the IT graduate mini project, so there's a chance for you to work together um, on a project and learn some of those skills as well. As we go through the first year, we also review fit to path. This is because we've discovered that sometimes upon joining, people find that they actually have a flair for something that's on one of the parallel paths. It also uh, gives us a chance to open up the um, Business analyst and uh, tester path that Helen was talking about earlier, you can see it just appeared on the screen there. And that takes us into the second year. So in the second year, we continue with the development in role and the training that depends upon the path that you're in. There's also the personal development workshop. Now this is something that all graduates in the bank take part in, um, and it's about it is about your personal development and how you see your career unfolding. 
We also then have a talent development alignment um, that again is looking forward to your career. The third year is follows on with um, further training and development in role um, and also a focus on interpersonal skills and at 36 months the program ends. So that's how the different paths uh, unfold over the three-year period. So we've heard quite a lot about um, what the bank is for, how the bank is structured, how IT works in the bank, and we've talked a bit about the structure of the program um, for graduate training and how the paths work through that and detail in them. It really is a unique opportunity to make use of the skills that you've got. We're doing some really cutting-edge work on um, data and some, some very interesting work around security uh, that you've heard about. There's also the breadth of our central bank systems and the infrastructure that we run. Uh, a real chance to for people both with specific technical degrees, but actually perhaps graduates from other disciplines, particularly in the developer paths, to get involved. Um, we aim to make the program as challenging and demanding as we can, and um, I hope that's been of interest to all the people who are watching. Last slide. I think we've had some questions coming in. Um, someone's just going to pass them to me. Uh, I'm going to attempt to answer as many as I can, but if there are some specific ones, I might call on the other people presenters that you've seen um, to answer as well. So, um, the first question is uh, How strong must your mathematical skills be in order uh, for the data scientist role? So, um, the way I often describe the answer to that question is to say that you need to be not afraid of the maths. Um, so, for example, Angus, who you saw speaking earlier about data science's role, actually has a background in chemistry. He's not a degree level mathematician. We have other people with an engineering background who have a particular interest in this as well. So, I would say if you've gone to A level and you still have an, uh, a numerate interest in maths, that's okay. The next question is, um, it says, in the description of the graduate program, it is written that four possible tracks are developer, data scientist, infrastructure analyst, and security analyst. Does the track of business analyst exist? Yes, it does. Uh, I think we saw a couple of slides back there. Typically, we take business analysts through one of the developer tracks first. And what we find is that sometimes with some experience about the application development and software lifecycle under their belts, um, actually, they find they have a flair or an interest for business analysts, or sometimes testing and move into that. The next question is, uh, what are the qualities that the Bank of England look for in candidates applying for graduate positions, and specifically for IT? Now, that's a, that's a very broad, broad question. Um, uh, I'm going to start with the answer, and then I might invite some of my colleagues to um, to add some extra parts as well. So I can tell you what I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for people who want to get involved um, understanding complicated business problems. Um, we're not a huge organization, which means that you have the opportunity to uh, work directly with the business. So I'm interested in people who have um, a technical interest and a technical flair, but have got some real people skills as well. Um, I'm going to call on Kat now. Is there any, anything you would want to add to that and what we look for? Um, I'm looking for highly analytical people. Um, and an interest in the organisation is important, but it can be that that can be developed later on. So up front, it's an understanding of how we fit into the economy. We want to see that demonstrated in application form, um, but not. If you're not coming from an economic background, don't be frightened about being assessed as a technical expert. You're being assessed for the IT stream, and we're looking for you to have the general skills that you're looking for. Um, the analytical ability is assessed throughout the assessment process, and problem solving is, is key in that. Um, and general soft skills are important across all of our graduate programs, the ability to work in a team and to work with others, but also in drive to work independently on projects. Uh, as well. So that's great. So I would sum that as yeah, strong analytical skills, um, strong technical skills, but also um, a, a people and, and team working focus as well. Um, I've got a fourth question here. It's quite a long one from someone who's obviously done a lot of preparation. Um, it says, after the reading the annual report, especially the AR 2013, it comes clear that the bank has continued to increase its focus on operational risk. 
Helen has talked about IT outsourcing, third-party software. Is the information systems technology vision at current also dealing with controlling and mitigating those risks from that area? So the very short answer to that question is yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, more broadly, we look at the um, systems and infrastructure that underpin our key processes and understand the uh, to understand the uh, components and vendors for those components and the risks that those present uh, to the bank. Um, we're also starting to look at places where we can perhaps consolidate or rationalize on vendors, but it's certainly it's something that we have a focus on and it's a risk that we're measured against. I've got more questions coming in, I believe, coming in thick and fast. Um, so here's a question, could you specify what knowledge you expect from uh, data science scientist applications? So I'm going to start the answer to this and then I'm going to invite Angus to uh, supplement with anything that I haven't covered. Um, knowledge I would put as um, a knowledge of how data can be used and exploited to answer questions. Um, so that's partly sort of knowledge and it's partly a set of skills. Um, related to the, um, to the the question that we had at the beginning there, I can think of we've had some real success with people who have had, for example, uh, natural sciences backgrounds who have used mathematical modeling to solve natural sciences problems, have actually come into the bank and found that those kinds of skills and that kind of background works very, very well for solving um, economics problems and the kind of mathematical models that sit behind there. So it's partly about knowledge, but it's much about skills and it's, it's much about interest as well. Angus, do you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, I think anything to add to that really is it's more about curiosity. So a lot of people that we have to be in a number of facts and that kind of thing as well. I think if you're the kind of person that looks at an answer and thinks, well, what does that tell me? What does that mean? Uh, what does that mean to somebody else? And really kind of get behind the problem and the mindset that people can give them information to. I think that's really important. Much more than a kind of a particular degree subject, things like that. Okay, I've got a question coming in on the back, Brina. Um, what is the working culture like within the IT sector? Um, that's a very good question. Again, so I'm going to I'm going to give you my answer because I think uh, the answer to a question like that is um, is kind of a little bit personal for everybody. And then I'm going to invite uh, Helen to speak a little bit about it, and I'll explain why. So um, I've worked here for more than 15 years, so I have a view that's formed by that. Uh, Helen's joined us quite recently, so it'd be good to get that recent view. So. Um, the first thing I'd say is it's generally very collaborative and supportive. Um, because we are the central bank, uh, we're not in a uh, very, very uh, competitive, profit-seeking uh, environment. We are in an environment where people are generally looking to make sound decisions based on good information. Therefore, there's a real um, incentive and a real premium on working, uh, working together to get the best answer. Um, I think it's also because we have a unique set of problems. There's a, there's a lot of, there's always something new to learn and there's always new, something new to get involved in. I know from my own point of view, when I first came here, I thought I'd be here for a couple of years and I always find there's a new and interesting thing uh, to work on. Helen, do you want to come over and, and, and say some more about what your experience is? Jump out of that. <laughs> sharing, sharing you can you see, yeah. um, so the thing that's most struck me in the few months that I've been here is genuinely how bothered people are by the institution that they work for. So there's just an overriding sense of uh, value in contribution. So people are very committed to the the output and the outcomes that they're working towards, and actually helping one another to get there. So. Um, my previous background is one of private corporations and companies, and I suppose I didn't quite recognize that there would be a difference coming to a unique organization like this, but there really is. And it is one of working together genuinely for a shared outcome that everyone believes in. So that's the most striking thing. The other thing that struck me is the range of people that we have here. So there's people that have been here for 30 years and people that have been here for 30 days, and they sit alongside one another working together. So a broad range of people. Uh, everyone getting on, everyone working to the same end. 
I think makes for a, for a very good working culture. So yeah, it struck me, struck me quite clearly actually. Okay, I think we've got even more questions coming in. So I'm just going to wait for someone to hand them over. These ones coming in on a laptop. Um, so the next question is, um, does the bank engage in SAP technology? Um, the answer is yes, we do have some SAP technology. Um, we use we use it specifically in our banknotes function. So I'll quickly explain what that is. So as well as producing and printing the banknotes, we actually deal with the logistics of how they're stored and distributed around the country. So we're using some SAP technology around that. Uh, but, but at the moment, not more broadly than that. Um, the next question is, uh, what happens at the end of the third year? Do we stay with the Bank of England or are we required to find our own way? Um, so the answer is, is absolutely you stay. Um, the, the, the aim of the program is to, to bring people in and to stretch them, grow them, give them the skills so that we can um, we can create the workforce that we need to take us forward. Um, one of the reasons for choosing the pathways is actually to create that sense of direction towards um, towards the role that you move into at the end of thirty six months, um, rather than, than than creating generalists or putting people in day one. So absolutely, there are um, are jobs at the end of third. In practice. We, we never struggle to place people. We quite often have team leaders and managers competing over um, over the graduates coming out at the end of the program. So don't worry about that. Um, the next question is, I have applied for a data scientist track. However, I would like to grow as a business analyst. Can I update my cover letter at this moment? Um, you can do. What I would encourage you to do is actually stick with what you've got because within year one, um, you will get the opportunity to um, to, to get involved in a bit in the business analyst skills. And then we, at the end of year one, when we have that review, if actually that's the direction that you need to go in, we can make that happen. Uh, but it's good to know. You might want to drop a, an email to Anna Bourne, because I'm guessing that if you've um, already applied, then you might be in touch with her already. Um, we've got some more HR-specific questions now, so I'm going to hand over to Kat, who's going to deal with us. Hi, so we've had some questions around the selection process and what the selection process is like. So to talk you through that, I will explain the three different stages that we use, but also want to refer you to our website, bankofenglandgraduates.co.uk. On our website, we have a lot of information about the selection process, and it includes videos of recent graduate entrants talking about their, how they prepared for the different stages, and that includes a video with one of our uh, IT graduates, Rohit, talking about how he approached and prepared for the logic test, which takes part at the first stage of the selection process. So it's an online application form, and take your time on your application form. Our deadline is 5 p.m. on the 23rd of May. We do not uh, recruit on a rolling basis. It's about the best applicant being taken through to the next stage. So use the time between now and the 23rd to do your research to write the best answers you can to the questions. And as I mentioned the videos, have a look at the videos on our website and take the tips from Jess, who's our current HR graduate, talking about how she went through the uh, application form. Then the next stage is a technical assessment. You will complete a written uh, analytical paper and a logic test. And those are assessments of your written communication skills, your analytical ability, um, and also your, your logic. And again, there are videos about the, the analytical paper and also the logic test. The final stage of the selection process for candidates who pass the, the test in the first stage is a selection centre which is held in our Fred Needle Street building. And that consists of an interview and a group exercise. In the interview, we'll be assessing your interest in working for the bank and in our programme, um, the areas within IT that are of interest to you, and we'll be looking at your soft skills, so your interpersonal awareness, your communication, drive and determination. In terms of technical assessment, this will vary according to your academic background. So if you haven't studied a computer science related degree, we will take that on board and your questions will be relevant. But we would expect you to demonstrate an awareness of the kind of IT that we're doing at the bank and obviously taking part in this webinar will stand you in good stead. Um, I've also received a question about how many graduates we're looking to hire. So we're looking to hire five graduates into the IT program. 
for this September. And the program will start on the 30th of September. So it's five positions. I've also had a few questions come through about work permits. So the bank is a tier two visa sponsor. If you are an international student studying in the UK and on a tier four visa, we can transfer you across to a tier two visa under our sponsorship. You need to hold that tier four visa at the point that you apply to the bank um, and then we can transfer you. If it expires before you join the bank, then unfortunately it can't be transferred across to tier two. Because it's a graduate program, it's very, very difficult to get sponsorship under tier two if you don't already hold a tier four visa. Um, if you are an international student studying outside of the UK, then you need to consider whether you can apply for a visa yourself because we can't support that. And I'd recommend you have a look at the government websites around applications for visas. Okay, I'm going to hand back over for some technical questions. More technical. Fine, fine. Hello, I'm back again. Wait for my next round of questions. But here it is. Uh, I'm interested in being a developer. However, I learn my master's degree in management science, which contains mathematical programs and algorithms. Um, is my education suitable for your requirement? Uh, very much so. Um, I think if you're interested in mathematical programming and algorithm development, uh, I would say the data scientist path uh, might look attractive. Or if you're interested in getting involved in um, a, a greater breadth of projects, then you could be interested in our developer track as well. So um, take a look at those. Do you have more? Is there a good work-life balance? Um, that's an interesting question um, coming to someone who gets up as early in the morning as I do. Um, so uh, there are lots of opportunities within the bank. Uh, we have um, flexible working very much so. So um, work, working hours can be very, very much. If you have operational duties that require you to be in the building or be in a certain place, then obviously you need to respect those. But if you don't, uh, we support home working. Um, and we support hot desking in certain parts of our buildings as well. We also have things like a gym um, on our main site in Threadneedle Street for, for people who like to get involved and stuff like that. Um, what are the skill sets that are expected for infrastructure and security candidates? Um, is there a specific academic background? Um, I'm going to invite Neil to, uh, to answer that one, switch to the jump seats. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we are looking for people with degrees around um, uh, computer science and security. So um, a degree, even the content of it, a part of it actually includes some sort of element of uh, computing or awareness around computing, I would still uh, encourage you to actually apply. Um, as I say, we're looking really for people with a, a passion to learn um, and as I say, we're investing you to make sure you have the right skills to be productive. Uh, and relevant skills for those skill tracks. So I'd encourage you, um, even if your degree is not fully in in, in, a, in, a, in computer science, if it's part of it, either programming or awareness, then I would I'd say I'm pleased to apply for these uh, the paths. I'll have a look at data science. I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to Angus. Oh yeah, back again. Right. Um, what are the types of mathematical models projects that you have going on? Okay. So there's a few around the organization. As you can imagine, we have a sort of ongoing uh, program of work for people that are doing the forecast that you might see in some of the uh, documents uh, and kind of the analysis that the bank produces, modeling the economy, projecting what's going to happen in the future. Um, we also have uh, several projects uh, more focused on stress testing, either stress testing of individual firms and testing that there are you know, their sounds or what their exposures are to a variety of economic shocks, and also a more general program of work focusing on the economy as a whole and the stresses that the UK economy currently has. And again, it's a similar sort of economic shocks and which things would affect the economy adversely or um, or less less kind of dramatically. Um, I think that probably answers that one. But there's always new projects. I mean, we have a large. Uh, analytical and economic areas, there's always new projects focusing on a particular economic model, economic econometric model, or some other type of mathematical modeling. So it's always something interesting going on there. Uh, we have 
have another question, I suppose, related to security around security clearance. And do you have to be security cleared to work in security? You actually need to be security cleared to work with a bank. All the bank staff um, have to go through um, normal government security clearance. Um, there are some specialist roles um, within the security function that will go above and beyond that, but they are in the minority rather than the, the masses. But as I say, you will need to pass a security clearance check to actually be employed within the organization. It isn't a specific requirement of to work in the security um, function unless you're doing a really um, specialist role in that team. So the question about is is the uh, placement confined to one location or do you have the opportunity to travel? I, I think it depends on the uh, on on the role. So we are predominantly based based in London. We have um, two buildings in the centre of London, very close to each other, and another building in Essex, um, which is more of a contingency site. But um, certainly there is a, uh, an opportunity for foreign travel. Um, the bank, I suppose, is taking a, a bigger focus on the, its international presence. Um, that said, you would need to be in a position where uh, international travel is required, and certainly uh, my life over the last 12 months has been uh, nearly every week on a plane recently. So um, we do um, have a global presence, and we are respected around the world. So we are asked to attend conferences and other central bank meetings and things like that. It will, it will depend on what you're doing in the organization and your level of uh, maturity and experience and seniority, I'd say. As I say, people are worried about being, having to uh, move around the country. I'd say it, it's uh, it's not something you would probably be doing in the first two to three years of your placement. It would be when you actually get a level of uh, capability where you're asked to travel um, to deal with certain subjects. So, another question coming during the graduate program. Do you offer professional qualifications such as Princeton and Scrum? So we do look for certification uh, of training, generally. Uh, in the Prince2 space, we have um, not mentioned here as part of this the, uh, on the past. We have a program management function, a project management function, uh, and most of those individuals are trained in Prince2 and have Prince2 qualifications. In Scrum, we have developers who are trained in Scrum methodology and have certifications. So in the infrastructure space and security space, we look for accreditation. So we have I mentioned earlier about Cisco. We have Cisco accreditations for network personnel. We have uh, accreditations from suppliers around Microsoft, um, EMC. And in security space, we look at accreditation, accrediting our staff around where security dis disciplines are required. Again, so we are um, a big supporter of that, and we make sure that you have a structured development program, which ultimately um, results in a certification that uh, basically builds your CV, I'd say. What is the question about what is the onboarding process? Is it hands-on, and are you assigned a mentor? Is that something you can as part of the graduate yeah. program? Hi, the Onboarding process is um, dealt with by a team in HR initially, so we will send you your relevant forms and that will include the security clearance forms that you will need to join the bank. Um, because we are running this as a spring round, there is actually a very small gap between the point that we will be able to offer you a position and you joining us at the end of September. So you have a slightly shorter waiting period uh, than your peers who have um, who were recruiting in our autumn round have waited for. Um, during that period of, of waiting to join us, we are looking at holding an open day in uh, early September for new entrants, and it's a chance for you to come in to meet the rest of your, your peer group. And that's not just the graduates within IT, but it's also graduates across the whole of the organization. Um, your first week at the bank will be spent in your business area. And you'll get to know your teams, where you're working, find your way around the building. But Following that week, you will then go on to a two-week induction program. And that induction program sets the scene for understanding what the bank does as a whole. You'll get to meet lots of senior people. Typically, the governor will, will make an appearance during the induction. You'll get to meet executive directors and heads of division and understand how you and your role fits into the bank as a whole. Um, mentors is something I think that is being looked into for the IT program, but not currently offered. But we do look to buddy you up with someone from around the division or from who's previously been on the graduate program as well. Okay. Well, another couple of questions, a really uh, technical question actually from someone. Um, has the bank ventured into software-defined networks with infrastructure operations? And um, someone's uh, up to date on latest technology. Um, yes, we are looking at it. So I mentioned earlier that our network infrastructure, we are replacing it all with the latest technology. Um, Software-defined networks is the later, latest sort of buzzword out there as far as um, being able to program networks as opposed to uh, having to go on to individual boxes to configure them. So 
we are looking at seriously, as I mentioned earlier, we are into um, trying to automate our platforms and virtualize as much as we possible. And again, it's certainly on our agenda. We look to leverage the latest technology um, to make sure it's easier for us to manage the organization's infrastructure and to make it more effective for the organization. I have a question about interaction between junior and senior employees of the bank. Um, it's interesting, I, I, I mean, I've been here slightly longer now, and I've been here four years. Uh, and what's taken on me is it's quite a small organization. It has grown quite recently when we uh, merged with the, uh, the FSA's uh, uh, basically took the potential regulatory authority away from the, uh, the FSA and merged with that. It's a slightly big organization, just under 4,000. But because it is still quite a small organization, the interaction for the management layers is very proactive. So you will not be expected to hide in a room away from senior members of colleagues. Um, we all sit on the same floors. People have a very much open door policy. Um, and you will have opportunities to engage with senior or senior um, all the way up, I imagine, up to the executive level, director level, even beyond that. So um, you will be have the chance to uh, hopefully see the governor speak as well if you join the organization. But if we don't have barriers. We certainly don't have a, a structure where um, you cannot speak to senior members of the organization. We're a very open organization. I think you mentioned before, and Helen mentioned it. Um, people work as a team for the common good, and um, grades do not play into that as well, so making sure you interact. Here's a question on data science. Again, another question on software. Right. What kinds of software is used for data scientists? Okay, uh, I have experience with MATLAB. Can you apply it? Absolutely. MATLAB is one of the common tools we use in the mathematical modeling area in the bank. It's probably our most popular mathematical modeling tool. Outside of that, um, you saw a slide where we talked about some of the BI tools that we're using. We currently have the Microsoft BI stack that we're using for data analytics and data consumption. And I think I said as well in my um, my little slide that and my talk was that really this is an area that's undergoing change. So I cannot tell you what all the tools we'll be using in two years' time. We actually haven't decided, but that's kind of the work one of the things we'll be doing soon. So um, you know it's an exciting area. Um, I should imagine we'll have kind of uh, a slightly different tool set in the future. There'll be lots of diverse tools, but equally all focused on either the mathematical side or making sure analysts, economists, etc., can do their job and they have the tools they need at their fingertips to consume and manage uh, and kind of play with data. Okay, right. Um, data scientists are working through data warehousing. That's true for the BI stream, definitely. Which systems are using and how is data mining realized? Okay, so uh, as I said, we are mainly a Microsoft BI house, so that's integration services, data services, SQL Server, and reporting services. So that's our kind of core tool um, that we use for kind of uh, collecting, storing, and making the data available to people. Um, we do have some other tools in that space that um, kind of provide a variety of other kind of niches that people need. For instance, Tableau for some more sophisticated data consumption. And again, we're working on projects, and I'm working on projects of people that are asking us for new and interesting ways of consuming data, and we're trying to find tools that meet those needs. Um, and you mentioned data mining. So data mining isn't something we do a great deal of actively in my projects at the moment, but certainly we have a lot of data in the organization. We know that we can use it more effectively and extract even more information from the things we have to hand. And certainly there's some work going on around the organization at the moment to look at how we can make data mining better and how we can apply the sort of tools and technologies we have there to gain even greater insight. But again, that's part of the emerging data strategy and data story. Another one for me. Does the bank work under an agile software development environment? Uh, so the answer to that one is yes, sometimes. Uh, it depends on the projects. Uh, quite a lot of our projects now are agile. Um, most business areas also like it as well because they get to see kind of progress uh, as, as the, kind of the, the development work continues. They get to kind of change their minds and choose and reprioritize and all the good things that Azure provides. That isn't always appropriate for every project that we run in the bank, and we certainly still do have projects that use Waterfall, either because traditionally they've used Waterfall and the business areas are used to that, or there's some very strict sort of controls and processes and deliverables that are required, and actually Waterfall fits better. But we do do both, and actually our developers would be expected to generally know and apply both uh, techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Okay, right. So what are the main software languages within the data sciences program? Obviously, that's the ones used within the central bank, bank systems developer program. Okay, so central bank developer program, um, we are largely a Microsoft shop, so that would be most of our projects are .NET stroke SQL Server. We're not exclusively, we have a variety of other technologies that are either sort of specialist tools that we use or are kind of here for historic reasons. You know, we still have Cobol systems, we have Java, we have specialist trading systems that use their own bespoke languages. Um, so Microsoft being a common one, and that's true as you've already heard from the uh, data scientist and BI space, it's all in the Microsoft BI stack. And then again, we have a variety of specialisms for where kind of more mathematical tools are required, whether that be MATLAB, or some other mathematical languages like R. Um, but it's, it's a kind of, we, we try and control the amount of languages and technologies we have developing, but we also have to kind of uh, recognize that the needs of our business areas change and evolve in time, and the technologies themselves evolve and change. So it's a kind of evolving learning um, program. Do you have any specific technical requirements to develop a role in the central bank systems? Do you have any relevant experience to go into help and applying? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, we are. I think that the main thing is that we're looking for people that are intelligent and enthusiastic and keen and have some form of, sort of technical or, or background, structured background. Um, if you have an IT degree or a software engineering degree, then great. Um, I started in the developer pathway a quite a long time ago, and I have a chemistry degree. Um, I never really felt that wasn't uh, that helped me back. Uh, I've also managed graduate teams, and we have everyone from artificial intelligence degree to natural sciences to physics to maths, uh, Chinese, all sorts. So really, it's more about kind of um, brain power and enthusiasm more than a specialist IT or software engineering background. But those are great things to have as well. <coughs> Okay, well, I, I might start this one, and then, okay, so the question is, what are the immediate and long-term challenges the bank sees itself in, and how much the role, ha uh, uh, I'm now, and how much role IT has impacted on these challenges? Right, okay, so there were some slides at the beginning which started to um, detail the sort of strategic thinking and the thinking of how we're focusing on the future. So we've kind of um, we've under, recently undertaken a strategic review. We've kind of, sort of identified some core pillars uh, of where we need to go and where we need to improve. I mean, the, the key pillar that uh, I see is most relevant to, but not entirely, is the analytic level. If the bank desires to improve its quality of its analysis, to improve the quality of its output and, and understanding, and to make sure it's kind of absolutely at the top of its game, then IT is one of the supporting uh, tools uh, and that that helps the rest of the bank get there. Um, you know, data, as I've mentioned several times now, is a core part of that, and making sure that data is you know uh, kind of embedded in the organisation in a way that people just can naturally consume the data they want and can get the data they find and kind of just do fantastic and great things with it. Something else on that? One bit. Go on, Will. So I'll talk a little bit more to that. Uh, it's, a, it's a great question, by the way. So I think, I think the challenges um, actually start right outside in the UK and global economy, which is changing all the time. Um, and the Bank of England now has uh, more powers to, to, to do things for the, um, for the good of the public of the UK um, than it's ever had before. So as well as the monetary policy powers that we've got to set interest rates, we've now got regulatory powers, which are much stronger than anything we've had in the past. And that means we've got to be making the right decisions at the right time, which in turn means we need the information and the data to underpin those decisions. So that's the business landscape, if you like, of challenges. And then when you start to look at what's going on um, in the world of data and the amount of data that's available and the sheer amount of information that you can obtain and then store and then consume and analyze, I would say that we're at the center of those two forces. We have um, an ever-changing world of uh, business requirements in one space 
but an ever-changing world of technology capabilities and that we're trying to bring those two things together. What's the next question? This is the question to me. Off the screen here again. Um, what's the amount of programming and scripting involved in infrastructure operations and which languages are used? Um, I am going to invite Neil to answer that <laughs> uh, because he might like, like my answer. Thank you. Um, again, just, just, just before the, um, the previous question, again, the media changes. I just want to labour the point. Security is, is again something that um, is a real focus of the organisation, and IT is playing a leading role in protecting the organisation. So it's one of the things that I mentioned earlier. We are really focusing on um, building capability around IT security. A question about um, languages used infrastructure. Um, I mentioned automation is one of our, our big agenda items, uh, and we're not, to be honest, we're not where we need to be at the moment. So we are investing heavily in um, how do we automate our platforms. So um, we have done a lot of automation around shell scripting, uh, scripting within Microsoft technologies, uh, and scripting around um, the, you know, the technologies that from the vendors around Cisco and EMC. Um, and just some interesting facts. I mean, again, another interesting fact: we used to do, um, deploy probably about a hun uh, 120 servers a year. We're now up to about 140 servers a month, and that's as a result of writing more uh, scripting activities, more working with things like virtualization platforms around VMware, um, allow us to actually. Um, roll out servers very, very quickly, you know, within hours now rather than it used to be days. Any more questions? Or, or, or another cat? So um, we've just got a few HR questions outstanding, but conscious of time as well. So just to make you aware, if you've put a question in and we haven't answered it yet, um, and we've done our best to try and answer every question that's come in, but if you haven't, we will respond directly to you because um, we'll answer these last few questions and then we'll um, close the webinar. So I had a few more questions about visas. Um, with the visa, um, if you are already holding a Tier 2, unfortunately we can't transfer that across. It's only the Tier 4 that has the um, option of being transferred across, I'm afraid. Um, had a question around multiple applications. Do we have any regulations or particular rules towards multiple applications? Um, can you reapply next year? Uh, you can reapply next year, but what I will say is we do have a 12-month uh, policy period, so you, you can, can only apply once every 12 months. So if you apply in the spring rounds or are unsuccessful, you wouldn't be able to apply in the forthcoming autumn round. Um, however, if you, you did apply to us in the autumn round, you can apply to us when we open again in the autumn, but you wouldn't be able to apply for the spring. Um, I have a question here around uh, travel expenses. Is it possible to get a refund? We do uh, pay towards travel expenses. Um, however, we will pay a maximum of £35 for travel expenses within the UK and up to £100 towards travel uh, from outside of the UK to us. Um, and what's the competition like? It's a competitive process. At the moment, we, um, we have less than 100 applications, but we have significantly more than that in progress. And going back to my point earlier, this is about submitting the best application that you can. So do take your time and um, you know, do the application form is always going to be the most competitive part of the selection process. So it's very important you put as much effort into that than you do into any other part of the selection process. So we're going to bring the webinar to a close. Thank you very much for taking part. We hope it's been useful. Um, fantastic amount of questions from you at the end. Um, and we will be sending you uh, a copy of the webinar um, either tomorrow or Monday so that you can refer back to it. Um, particularly if you are going through the selection process, it will be helpful research for you. So thank you very much and enjoy your evenings.